Welcome to Varian, everyone. Before I get into today's episode, I want to let you all know two things. First, today's episode is sponsored by our friends over at Verve. So be sure to stick around at the end of the episode to hear how you can get a free 30 days to check out some of your favorite shows. Second, I will be doing a meet and greet Saturday, October 20th at the Irving Convention Center for Dallas Fan Days. You'll find me at Booth 79 hanging out with my buddies from The Lost Toys. They'll have some pretty cool collectibles there as well. So if you're in the area, stop by Booth 79 and let's talk comics. Complete details will be in the description below. Now all you longtime members of the Variant Nation know that October is Villains Month here on the show. And today we're taking on a big one with the king of mobsters himself, Wilson Fisk, aka Kingpin. Which is perfect timing because he'll also be making his live action return this Friday for Daredevil Season 3. Kingpin first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man Issue 50 in July of 1967. He was created by Stan Lee and John Romita Sr. 49 issues into the Amazing Spider-Man series, Spidey had already faced off against a ton of crime bosses, such as Crime Master, Big Man, and you could even count Norman Osborn, aka Green Goblin himself. And that only makes sense since the webhead is a superhero, meaning he fights crime. But again, 49 issues in, Stan wanted to create a character who saw crime as nothing more than a business. Someone who could successfully unite crime, making it into an army that he could command. In turn, making this character the kingpin of crime. See what I did there? In any case, both Lee and Romita took inspiration from actor Sidney Greenstreet, and thus they created Wilson Fisk, aka Kingpin. So that's his real world origin. Now let's take a look at his fictional one. Like all comic book characters, Kingpin has had different retellings of his origin. With that said, for this history of episode, I'm gonna kinda go off the beaten path a bit. Because I, and I'm sure many others, regard Kingpin's origin from Spider-Man the Animated Series to be the best one to date. So that's the one I'm primarily gonna tell you today. But don't worry, I'll touch on his comic origin briefly after. As a child, Wilson Fisk was overweight and because of this was constantly bullied. And his father wasn't there for him as he was too busy trying to become a member of the mob. But things never really went his father's way. As Fisk said, whatever his father touched turned positively putrid. But being his son, he still wanted to please his dad. So over the years, he tried to join in on his father's business pursuits, as he wanted to gain his father's acceptance. One day, while running away from the cops, Wilson's father ran up a fire escape ladder, but Wilson wasn't able to climb up it like his father. And instead of helping his son, he left Wilson to get arrested by the cops. Leaving the idea in Wilson's head, sometimes sacrifices must be made. He was then thrown into prison, and while there, he learned he was going to have to survive or be destroyed. And learned he did. By the time he was released from prison, he acquired all the skills needed to build his criminal empire. Once a free man, he quickly became known as the Kingpin. He would even use his vast knowledge of computer technology to erase his past criminal records. And with his criminal record gone, only one thing remained that linked him to his past his father. His father, who calls Kingpin Willie, was now proud of the man he became, even though he treated him like crap when he wasn't in power. But Kingpin tells him, your son Willie ceased to exist when you left him in prison. Now it's your turn. And Kingpin has his guards kill his father while he says, sacrifices must be made. Do you see why I like this Kingpin origin so much? It's emotional, ruthless, and complex. And this was a Saturday morning cartoon for kids. Crazy. With that said, his comic origin is still pretty cool as well. It goes as follows. Wilson Grant Fisk was an overweight child who was picked on and very unpopular. Because of this, he became a recluse. So he would watch people from the outside and observe them. This in turn would help him develop a unique perspective and skill to use others to meet his own needs. Little did he know using people was his first steps towards his criminal career. Not to mention he was only 12 years old when he killed someone for the first time, just using his brute strength. This made him believe that brute strength was the only way to become truly successful within the criminal underworld. So he trained himself in bodybuilding and sumo wrestling to turn himself into a force of brute strength. He then decided to build his education and study becoming very well versed in political science. With his newly acquired knowledge, along with his brute strength and amazing organization and leadership skills, he became known as the Kingpin of Crime. But now, how about some story arcs? Let's get to it. Kingpin's first story arc took place in his first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 50 in the ever so popular Spider-Man No More story where Peter Parker famously retired from being Spider-Man. To the public, Wilson Fisk was a legitimate wealthy businessman who donated to charity and was genuinely viewed as a nice guy. But behind the scenes, Fisk was waiting for the right moment to secure his place as king of the criminal underworld. He found this moment when he read a Daily Bugle article that suggested Spider-Man was through crime fighting. So Kingpin forced all crime to unite and rule the streets of New York while Spider-Man was gone, which caused one of the biggest crime waves New York has ever seen. This of course ultimately leads to Spider-Man coming out of retirement to defeat the Kingpin. It also leads to one of the best 
Spider-Man fights, in my opinion, when he fights the Kingpin for the first time. Kingpin just literally manhandles Spider-Man both times they fight. So much so, Kingpin escapes Spider-Man at the end of the story. So even though Spider-Man was able to save J. Jonah Jameson, who had been kidnapped, and stop the crime, Kingpin still got away in the end. Proving in his first story ever, mind you, that the Kingpin was a force to be reckoned with. We would next see Kingpin in The Amazing Spider-Man issues 59 through 61, where Fisk took on a new approach of putting New York under his control. He secretly hired an Osborne employee, Dr. Gerhard Winkler, who specialized in brainwashing techniques. Using the brainwashing techniques, Fisk tried to brainwash the most important people within New York City, and have them under his control. But of course, Spider-Man managed to defeat Kingpin, and when Osborne found out Winkler's and Fisk's secret, he caused Winkler to accidentally destroy his brainwashing machine. Machine. With Winkler killed by the machine's explosion, Fisk was able to escape the authorities by using one of Osborne's helicopters. One thing you'll notice, Fisk is really good at evading the police. Then we have The Amazing Spider-Man 68 through 70, in the story titled Crisis on Campus. Because of all his prior defeats by Spider-Man, Fisk was all like, let's just remove the one reason my plans keep falling through, aka get rid of Spider-Man once and for all. In trying to do this, however, he gained way too much unwanted attention from the Popos and was forced to lay low. Jumping ahead a bit, skipping some stuff here and there, throughout the 60s and 70s, Kingpin was primarily a Spider-Man villain, but that all changed in the 80s when Frank Miller was like, yeah, he's primarily a Daredevil villain now, in the ever so famous story called The Kingpin Must Die, written by Frank Miller. The story started in Daredevil The Man Without Fear issue 170. Previous to the story, Fisk was forced by his wife to retire his life of crime, so he did so and moved to Japan. Flash forward some time, Fisk was offered a deal with an attorney general to turn over files that had incriminating evidence which would place the remaining crime lords in New York City into jail. His wife was like, you better take the freaking deal because it will clear your name and you'll get a nice chunk of change. So of course he took the deal and needed legal representation. And who do you think he got? Matt Murdock and Foggy Nelson, of course. However, the remaining crime lords found out Fisk was going to rat them out, so they kidnapped his wife Vanessa in exchange for their files. During said exchange, Fisk anticipated an attack orchestrated by the crime lords, and this attack ultimately led to Fisk returning to his role as the kingpin of crime, promising that the city would suffer from bloodshed if his wife was harmed or killed. And wouldn't you know it, this brings him into conflict with Daredevil. The Kingpin also gained Bullseye's loyalty by giving him steady work. So Bullseye is also a big part of this story as well, and Kingpin would go on to fight Daredevil a bunch more times. Like when he completely destroyed his life in Daredevil Born Again. Long story short, Murdoch's ex-girlfriend Karen Page traded Daredevil's secret identity in exchange for drugs. Kingpin soon finds out about this revelation, then uses this info to destroy Murdoch's career and private life. Now Kingpin throughout the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and even the current 2000s would go on to be one of comics most loved villains. I mean he's currently in Daredevil Season 3. He started off solely as a Spider-Man villain, then became a Daredevil villain, and now just kind of jumps back and forth when needed. And currently that's with Daredevil as Fisk has recently become the mayor of New York, and Daredevil is determined to prove that he cheated his way into office. But with that said, let's talk about powers and abilities. Kingpin has several skills and abilities. Though he appears to be an overweight man, Kingpin's body mass is mostly composed of pure muscle rather than fatty tissue. It's been said that only 2% of his body is fat, the rest is muscle. And even though he's a big guy, Kingpin is extremely fast and agile. Since Kingpin's body is so dense, it also protects him from lethal attacks like stab wounds and occasional gunshots in non-vital areas of the body. He's also highly trained in sumo wrestling and hapkido. He combined the two to create his own brutal fighting style. In fact, Kingpin takes fighting so seriously that on a daily basis he trains himself with at least six hired martial artists, some of which are armed with weapons and they are told to never hold back their attacks against Fisk. That's one way to get better. He's such a skilled fighter, he's bested heroes like Spider-Man, Daredevil, Punisher, and Captain America on more than one occasion. He also carries his cane known as his Obliterator Cane. The stick stores and compresses energy that he can release with the click of a button located on the cane. Depending on the amount of energy he has stored up, the blast could simply knock someone out or obliterate anything it hits. And lastly, he's extremely intelligent in business, finance, and political science. He's a brilliant overpowered mobster. That's a deadly combination. If you think Kingpin is an awesome villain like I do, you're probably going to want some reading recommendations. So check out In the Clutches of the Kingpin in Amazing Spider-Man issues 50 through 52, Gang War in Daredevil the Man Without Fear issues 170 through 172, Return of the King in Daredevil Volume 2 issues 116, Severance Package in Spider-Man Tangled Web issue 4, and finally, Daredevil Born Again.
As I mentioned earlier, today's episode is sponsored by our good friends over at Verve, spelled V-R-V. Verve is, of course, the streaming platform where we watch a bunch of our favorite shows, like My Hero Academia, Freakazoid, Gary and His Demons, and now a ton of classic Nick shows from the 90s on the Nick Splat channel. We're talking Doug, Are You Afraid of the Dark, and Av Real Monsters, just to name a few. Well, once again, Verve is hooking up the Variant Nation with a free 30-day ad-free trial of their Verve Premium subscription. Just go to verve.co forward slash variant or click the link in the description now to start watching great content on any of their 12 must-have channels, like Nick Splat, Crunchyroll, Cartoon Hangover, Rooster Teeth, and more. And did I mention that you can download the Verve app now on Apple TV, Xbox, PlayStation, iOS, or Android? so you can watch all the Nickelodeon classics and your favorite anime shows your heart desires from almost anywhere. In fact, with the Verve app, you can watch your shows even without an internet connection. So head over to verve.co forward slash V-A-R-I-A-N-T or click the link in the description and get your ad-free trial of Verve Premium for 30 days now. You'll be glad you did. First up for Wednesday, October 17th, we have Batman issue 57. Batman is out to take KG Beast down after he shot Nightwing a few weeks ago. You're definitely going to want to see this pissed off Batman taking down KG Beast. Here we have Nightwing issue 51. Dealing with his injury, we see Nightwing is now scared of heights, which is something he's going to have to overcome if he plans to stay in the superhero game. Now we have What If Marvel Comics Went Metal with Ghost Rider. You put Ghost Rider and Metal together, and I'm reading it. Next we have Justice League issue 10. This is the road to Scott Snyder's Drowned Earth story. If you're looking to jump onto the Justice League book, this is the perfect time to do it. And finally, we have Daredevil issue 609. The 11th hour draws near as Matt Murdock prepares to square off against the Kingpin. And that's going to bring another episode of Variant to a close, but remember to check out Verve. You'll get a free 30-day ad-free trial if you click the link in the description below. But as always, check out our website, VariantComics.com. Also, check out our social media. Links for that is also in the description. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.